Thank you, Annie Jeanette Singleton, for your welcome. Thank you, James, for giving me this opportunity to share my story. Um, good evening. First, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners, the Jabaka, uh, the sorry, apologies, the Yurikanji people, and the neighbouring tribes, the Jabakai and Yudinji people. Um, indigenous elders, past and present, ladies and gentlemen, and fellow leaders. I'd like to take this opportunity to talk about my own perspective and leading in two worlds and in my, my own personal journey. For that you don't know me, my name is Margaret Blackman. I'm a Gurang woman on my great-grandfather's side and a Gurang Gurang woman on my great-grandmother's side. I also have traditional ties to the Yudinji country, which is in Goldsboro area, on my mother's side, and I'm also of Torres Strait Islander um, heritage, which my people come from Murray Island, Mare, and St. Paul's Island, Mavi York. My connection to the Cape York is through my grandfather, who was a Torres Strait Islander man who was born in Lockhart River. I also have connections to Mapoon. Being brought up in central Queensland and far north, I've always continued to keep my cultural identity. During my younger years, I was taught the values of culture by my father, Kerry Blackman, and Jackie, and my mother, Jackie. My grandmother on my father's side was also instrumental in teaching me the values of, in the life of being an Aboriginal. My grandfather, on my mother's side, also taught me the cultural practices such as hunting, fishing, and knowledge of the sea. Since then, I've constantly strived to always further my knowledge and culture, and always maintain country, uh, connection to country, and uphold the most high-level morals, uh, values. I've learned in my life in order to, to reach your goals, you need to work hard, and nothing comes easy. I would like to share this quote with you. This was said by my grandfather, who was my grandmother's brother, who was born on Palm Island. His name was Robert Lewis Mazza, also known as Bob. You may know him from his acting career. He was in movies such as Fringe Dwellers, Reckless Kelly, and Harry's War. He was also instrumental in, his early, um, in the early 60s in Ab Aboriginal rights movement. So his quote was, let the black man tell the black man's story. So what better time for me to share the story of a black man? I recently graduated, as James said, um, in a degree at James Cook University. In a Bachelor of Business, my, ma my major was Management and Entrepreneurship. I've now continued and currently studying my Masters of Business. So throughout my journey, I call in the white world, um, at James Cook University, I always seen a need that Indigenous students needed to come together, not only to strengthen the dialogue between the wider JCU space, but to create networks, maintain strong relationships, and be collaborative, creative, and implement change. Together, as a united group, I led the way to establish the first Indigenous Student Association at James Cook University. The Bama Numabara Indigenous Student Association was formed on two, in 2010. Bama Numabara is a Yuriganji language name, meaning people belonging, of, on, belonging to tomorrow. The role of this student body was to represent, advocate, and support Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander students. I still remain the president of that association. From this network of Indigenous students, we continue to make change in JCU by creating the Deadly Mentor Program. This was in partnership with the Learning and Teaching Centre at JCU. We showcased a lot of cultural practices by also facilitating the NAIDOC Day Reconciliation Night. The most significant event for us, which impacted the university and created a space, was to, to host the first time in history the Indigenous University Games. This was something spectacular to not only us as um, Indigenous students, but to the university. So from a small, up, small yarn up session with fellow Indigenous students, we come together as a collaborative 
group, establishing not only the student body succeed, but leave a legacy for the next students who walk through the doors of JCU, a stepping, tone, a stepping stone to reach their full potential. Even if it meant I needed to, to go and knock on the vice chancellor's door to make things happen. In all this, you may ask, how have I kept my cultural um, identity? I'm a director of Gadajal Corporation, which is made up of my, four, uh, my two traditional owner groups, the Gurang and the Gurang Gurang people, in the area of Port Curtis Coral Coast region. Whilst in my journey, I've always managed, as an Indigenous person, to work, to work in the corporate world. I've worked in Commonwealth Bank, Indigenous Business Australia, I'm currently, as James mentioned, working at Jarrigan Enterprises, which is a non-for-profit organisation that provides indigenous, uh, in indigenous youth with employment. The way that I've managed as, as an Indigenous person in the corporate world is always maintain my cultural identity. Being able to be an Indigenous person, you make way, create partnerships and build relationships through being able to talk to Indigenous people and understand mainstream Australia. My own philosophy, knowledge is power. I pursued an education which gave me the opportunity and the mechanisms to be able to walk and operate in these two worlds and talk the language of the white world. I've always been proud of my Aboriginality. How being Indigenous is not a, is not a disadvantage in the work, in a workforce, but a strength. Having always my cultural identity, I've used this throughout my roles and career. Working as a project officer with Balkan and Cape York, Land, uh, Cape York Development Corporation, I always managed to, to make myself um, connection with the families, which made my job so much easier. Keeping my culture alive whilst also participating in this workforce, I've always been able to go back to my country, either through native title meetings cultural heritage monitoring or family gatherings. We also hold things as immersion weekends, being able to practice our language, dance, workshops, artwork, and reinforce my connection to this country. How I've managed to uh, manage other Indigenous people into mainstream norms is throughout my career. I've mentored other fellow Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people on the, base, on the basics of what Indigenous means. This is not a disadvantage at all, but a plus. You are able to train yourself in developing and understanding mainstream norms, but never lose your identity. I would encourage as many Indigenous people who are considering studying to give it a go for their future and for their children's, because you won't, you won't know what you do until you try. My contribution to my family I've kept by maintaining my culture is throughout um, my career. The skills and knowledge which I have gained through my studies, I plan to use in the area which is to create and innovate economic development in regional or remote communities. Their transition into the real workforce is such a challenge for Indigenous youth, partic particularly. My passion is to help others understand what they need to gain and sustain employment. I am also keen to see culture and language remain intact whilst creating employment and wealth opportunities. I just wanted to share my, um, what I'm trying to say through a diagram which may not come up. Anyways, if it doesn't. Oh. Um, the way that the two worlds interact. So you have the white world sorry if I offend anyone, and the black world. Being able to use your own, the way that I use my own cultural, morals, ethics and values, this space here is where you can be able to move from these worlds. Through education, knowledge, partnerships and relationships. This is where, we've, this is where the two worlds combine and how powerful is that. So I conclude the story of a black man. I hope I have not only given you an insight into living these two worlds, but a direction into empowering Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people of today and tomorrow.
and to grab every opportunity that is available to us. Thank you.